Okay, let's do Ecclesiastes 1. The dogs are quiet. <laughs> So if you guys got to uh, watch the last video, um, go check out in the description of Wackadoodle Samoan's channel. I linked that actual video that I was referencing uh, in in that uh, description. Uh, and give it a listen because uh, so much of that stuff fits. So now we're going to get Ecclesiastes 1. Because I did a part of Ecclesiastes 1 in uh, an evening prayer, but I want to do the whole chapter. So I'm going to get that down. And then we can go on to chapter 4. Excuse me. So Ecclesiastes 1, all is vanity. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rose. The wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. This goes back to the saying, um, and I forget where the scripture is, where God said, I will prove the end from the beginning. Let me see if I can find that. Hold on. Isaiah 46.10. Yeah, Isaiah 46.10. So, let's take a quick look. Because it's right next door. So, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying... My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. And so this is, uh, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. So everything that's already happened, and we can go back and look at all the shadows. In fact, we've done it in a bunch of videos already here. When you look at all the stuff that went on and all the shadows back there, you see what's about to happen being shown back in, in the Old Testament all the times that were recorded. So that's what's so important about going back and studying the Old Testament. That's why we're going through Ecclesiastes because there's some very interesting stuff in here that can open up the door for more understanding as to what's coming. In fact, most of your notable Bible scholars, and these are people like Barry was talking about uh, Isaac Newton. These are people who weren't particularly religious and their profession, or their their uh, their where they where they study, wasn't uh, particularly in the Bible. Yet they had very interesting insights into it, and most of it came from the Old Testament. Uh, Isaac was big into the Book of Daniel because the Book of Daniel has a lot of good stuff in it. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. Okay. So, is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. So, nothing we have now is old. Um, a lot of people say, well, look at all the technology that we have now. Well, let's look at it. Look at the circuitry that we've created and look at how we've been in. Okay. Go look at an aerial shot of some of the temples and stuff in Egypt. Looks just like a circuit board. When you go there... And they test the stones on how all that stuff was built. It's heavy, heavy silica. And it resonates. And several people, several, lots of scientists, they've gotten in there and they, and they said, just looking at how this is laid out, they said, if this was all put back together, 
and you stood in a certain spot and you blew a, you know they had them big horns, blew a really loud horn to get sound waves to pass through. They said this thing would light up like you wouldn't believe. And what they have, what they've surmised, because they've also discovered the pyramid is a giant water pump. What they've surmised is that sound played a role in all these things. There used to be back in the olden days a moat around the, uh, it was a sump around the pyramids. They they can go and look and see where the water marks are. And it wasn't from flooding. They found the underground tunnels and stuff, and they built it out of pipe. And it's a it's a ram pump. And so every time it does it, it makes this thunk when it pumps the water. So imagine on the scale of the pyramid, and it goes that kaboom, and that sound transfers out. They said, this is a giant power station that was run by water, and it's a massive ram pump. It's self-pumping. They would have to shut the gates or shut, put a stone in place to stop it. It was it was auto going. Those people knew a whole lot more than than what we give them credit for. Um, they were able to do things. Well, like uh, they they don't know how they were able to bore these clean, smooth holes through rock. There was a guy that um, a friend of his worked in a museum, and they had all these things sitting up against a wall, and it was like tuning forks, and they see tuning forks everywhere. So they, he took that design, and he made one, and he wrapped a, a wire around it, because some of them had wire wrapped around them. And what it did was is that when the wire wrapped around them, the fork couldn't go out, the fork could only go in, so it pushed the sound and the, and, the, and the vibration downward. So on the end of that shaft, he put a piece of copper pipe. He went and got him a big hunk of granite, he set it down there, and he set it on there, and he ding, and it started turning in his hands. It would spin. And so he got it to the point where it just keep itself up and he let it go. And it went almost indefinitely. Just ting, and it sat there and just drilled. And with copper, he drilled through granite because it was the sound waves that were cutting it. And when he was done, it was a completely, perfectly smooth hole, exactly what they find over there. So sound clearly was used quite extensively. And there are even places here today where they use sound to achieve much the same stuff. There was a guy that went and did a video, took a video of um, some guy, I don't know if it was Tibet or the Himalayas or something, um, but they had these two great big giant horns. You've seen them in videos and, and uh, pictures. And they would blow those horns. What they don't show people is what's going on on the other side of the valley because that sound wave goes down through that valley and there are guys on the other side pushing five ton stones up the hill. Because the sound waves are helping them, helping it move. Amazing stuff, you know. And and this is old, old, old technology. People have been using this technology forever. I mean, look what happens with music. How you can make firm glass flex with sound waves. People have forever and a day studied sound. Tesla studied sound waves. You know, there there's a lot of hidden knowledge in the world if people would take the time to look at it. Um, what was that? That uh, in Africa here just recently, they found a. Um, it looked like a giant sundial, and it was a circles of stones. And I forget the name of it. I don't know if it was Jacob's sundial or something like that, because it has the name on there. Yeah, Jacob's name, the one that was taken to Egypt and was second hand to Pharaoh, his name's all over the world, carved in stone. He's he went everywhere. They also found pyramids down there too. But anyway, they found this thing. It's way up on a hill. So they flew up there with a helicopter. And they landed and they're checking it out. They had their little electronic devices with GPS and that and they're trying to take readings and all that. And when the guy would step within the ring, everything went dead. Everything shut off. When he stepped out, everything came back on again. So they took the bird back up and they had a thermal imager and they took a thermal shot of what was going on. And the ring was red hot. Like the temperature was like what it would be the readings were what would be inside the, the rim of a volcano. Just outside the ring, it was back. It was totally normal. And they can't explain why it's like that. But while they were up there looking at that stuff, they were like, this looks like it's, it's all lined up. And they looked down across and down on the other side of the valley, and here's three pyramids right there. Been there all this time, nobody ever caught it. Um, the southern part of Africa has always been thought to have never been inhabited until recently. And they had all these weird designs of things down there. They've come to find out that actually 
it was completely inhabited because everything that was down there connects to Egypt. So yeah, there's a lot more going on back in the day than what we know. Also, the architecture from all the different parts of the world, all these different temples, well, if you go to each one, you see the exact same architecture in every one of them. In fact, in some cases, there was one person in particular who was doing all these carvings or part of a group. He had a certain way of running his tools. They find those same markings everywhere. From that, It's one individual person. It was the way they held their hand or something. It's all over the place. So yeah, there's a whole lot more going on back then than what we have now. But what we have now is not new technology. It's very old technology. And when you go back and trace back to where somebody, how they came up with what they came up with, every single time they're like, yeah, I was reading this book about this stuff, and that gave me the idea for this. Every time. There are no new inventions. And that's awesome. Because what that should tell us is that that's another proof that the Bible is true. Sorry, kind of went off on a rant there. So there is no remembrance of former things, verse 11, now we'll get back to Ecclesiastes. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. Talking about every generation forgets what they did, forgets history. We're doing it right now in this country. Forgets history. It makes the same mistakes. Every great civilization has fallen. The vanity of wisdom. I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. And I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be excised, exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness, and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge, and I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness. Oh, i got to watch that one. Um, and I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. And I can attest to that. Um, not that I know a whole lot of things. But when you go and experience a lot of things, when you see things for what they are, see the, the, the grandeur of man's mistakes, you start to realize this is all a waste of time. There's a better way. And that better way is Christ. This life is just a pass-through to what's waiting from the other side, which is far greater. Far greater than anything we'll experience here. Somebody had asked me, you know, what do you think heaven's going to be like? I said, well, imagine the most amazing scenario you can here on earth. Everything exactly the way you would want it. Heaven is a thousand times greater than that. One thousand times greater. You can't, even, you can't even imagine. The Bible says no, no mind has imagined what God has done for us. We have not seen anything yet. And this is only the beginning of it. We have to do this little stint here and then did the thousand year millennial reign to get all that stuff taken care of. When all that's done and all that prophecy is fulfilled, amazing things are going to happen. And we don't even know how amazing they are. So that was Ephes or Ecclesiastes 1. Ephesians. That was Ecclesiastes 1. And I wanted to get this down for the playlist because I'm going to put this all on a playlist. That way you guys can take your time watching them. You don't have to stay caught up with them. Um, let's do the um, commentary. The testimony of an unsatisfied soul. All is vanity. This cry finds an echo in human hearts of every age and clime. Claude meant... Uh, Claude, Claude? You say Claude or do you mean God? Meant man to be happy. These things, said our Lord, I have spoken to you, that your joy may be full. The fruit of the Spirit is joy, yet the air is laden with complaint and bitterness. Men are asking constantly, is life worth living? The present age is full of unrest and weariness, of war and strife, of unsatisfied yearnings and desires. The mistake is that men seek to solve the mystery of life 
and to find their happiness apart from God, who has made us for himself. This book was written and incorporated in the Bible to show that man's quest for happiness is vain, so long as it is apart from God. Solomon had unbounded opportunities for pursuing his quest. Youth, wealth, wisdom, royalty, human love were his. But when all were mixed in the golden cup of his life, he turned from the draught unsatisfied and said, Listen to the sigh of the sated volup voluptuary. Vanity of vanities. Let us turn from these bitter experiences. And we're going in 1 John 2 here. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world, or is grasping at wind. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So now we get a greater insight into that New Testament, in those New Testament statements. Talking about, don't love this life because nothing here remains. This is all gone. The food you eat, what you drink, your house you built, your cars, your toys, all that stuff, it's all dust. Because none of that is going to remain. None of that is going to be there after you're glorified. When we leave this world, when you die, you leave everything behind. You leave this world with less than what you brought into it. You brought a, brought a body into it when you were born. You leave it with less because that body stays in the grave. Nothing you have here means anything. Now, of course, if you're watching this video, we've already done chapter 2 and 3, um, but I wanted to redo this one away from the evening prayer that I did. And you see in chapter 2 and 3, Solomon is, enjoy your life. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. This is all vanity. None of this will be here. They use the word vanity, but you can actually use another word. That this is all, this is nothing. Enjoy what you have. Enjoy those things because none of this goes on to the next realm. What's over there is far greater than what's over here. What's over there, I should say, what's here doesn't compare to what's over there in any way, shape, or form. I've run into people in through 2019 that were like, oh, they're abs we're absolutely going to have sex in heaven. I was like, no, we're not. Why would such a carnal act exist in heaven there's no need for it that's carnal thinking you think that's the greatest thing you could have and i tell you that the least thing in heaven is a thousand times greater than that but that's why they keep referring to get away from these carnal things and in ecclesiastes that's exactly what solomon is like guys this is all carnal this isn't this is worthless i have the greatest gardens and the greatest palace and the greatest um, ministry and the greatest kingship and the greatest this and the greatest that most beautiful women all this stuff surrounding me I got all this gold in everywhere people from all over the world come and visit me and say hey you're looking good Solomon and I got all this stuff happening and I know all this stuff and I see all this stuff and I understand all this stuff and none of it does any good because the one thing I desperately need I don't have even though I have everything else and he finally came to the point where he realized this is, I asked for this and I got it and I'm happy that I got it, but this is nothing. And I think the reason why God poured out so much on him was to show him, it's nothing. when you die, it's gone. All your work and all your sweat, gone. Rest in the Lord. And this can lead into more of that understanding. Rest in the Lord. Relax. Don't get so serious about trying to build up this life when this life is nothing, it's fleeting. It's a wisp of vapor in all of eternity. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go into eternity, and ten thousand years is gonna be a couple of days. You know, eternity will just flow by because time doesn't operate up there. Down here, we think about oh, another year, another month. Oh, I, I gotta wait a week for that, and up there, it's not even on the radar. But clearly, that's what he's talking about here. And then we see a link to New Testament. Same thing. John says, don't, don't get it caught up in this stuff. Because 
it's worthless. Enjoy things of, of this life, but don't make that your God. Enjoy the, the fruits of your labor. Enjoy, just like Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 2, in, or 3 rather, enjoy the, the things you have and be happy with those. But go get salvation with God because that's more important than all of this stuff. Okay, guys, that was Ephesians 1. Now that we got Ephesians 1 done, I can go to Ephesians 4. But I'm going to set up the playlist today and put the, these videos in the playlist. That way, if you guys missed any of them or if you, you don't have time to watch it, you know you can go to the playlist and you can go watch that there. And I got a ton of stuff in playlists. Uh, that way you can take your time watching them. Okay, love you guys. And I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'm going to go take some ibuprofen. Hopefully it'll work. Get rid of this headache. See you guys in the next video.